Look at John's socks. What do you got on there, Johnny? I have uh, I have Wolverine socks today. Nice. And the headset. And, uh, you get laid a lot, don't you, with that outfit? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, God. So this is where we have fun with everybody at our expense and show you a little behind the scenes stuff. Next one. Let's go to number one. Having an extra bed. I'm not kidding, because I hate. You don't like Guys, the clip, the clip. I got the easiest job here. I just be myself and walk up and down an alley. John's got a schlep, a corpse up and down it. I just walk up and down the fucking alley. Yeah, so my biggest empathy I have for anybody on this crew, wherever it is, is John with the fucking steady cam. In Augsburg, there was one we, were, we totally found it by accident was that stairs where John had to walk down Ugh. backwards. Uh -huh. Backwards with the 70 to 100 pound steady cam, going backwards, negotiating while looking at the monitor, holding the shot. And, and, and that was three or four flights of pretty intense stairs. Yeah, that was a good quad day. Well, Icaro scouts the most difficult, strenuous <laughs> locations. Oh, there's a hill. Let's do for, steady cam. Yeah, for does. John to shoot <laughs> the oh. steady cam. Oh. You always warn John, right? Yeah. I mean, because that's the best <laughs> stuff, you know? So it's not pleasure of his misery. It's the pe pleasure of the misery that brings us the, the good stuff, you know? John, how long have you been uh, shooting Steadicam or operating the Steadicam? Almost 10 years. Wow. And you're, and you're operating that. I mean, I don't want it to be lost in the viewer, but you're operating that while you're holding a steady shot. Right, and, and, and you've got running, somebody running focus for you, mm -hmm. but you're making the calls on where you move, where you move with your subject, and you're almost always walking backwards. The walking backwards thing is something that, that we do, which was one of the things walking through Cougar that we had to you know, plan out because there's things poking out of these alleyways and things. We had a long walk and talk, as I recall. <laughs> oh, that's right, that was a and really <laughs> long walk. Usually, we try to walk through it once, so at least we know, okay, there's a nail here, and there's, there's a bear trap over there, and, but, but, but sometimes we don't have time, and it it's, gets really precarious, but it's, it's fun, it's definitely fun. Number 11, because this is a season about robots. So I dig that one, um, especially because it just shows the diversity of what Icky and his team catch, right? Before I got involved in this project, I never really appreciated how much time, effort, and work goes into dealing with some of these things. I had never seen a robot before. So for me, the seeing all the robots, the movement, the fact that you could see how they actually help in the medical world, it, it kind of blew my mind. Because for me, this shoot was about being introduced to real robots. Yeah, and not the sci-fi kind, like the Ex Machina or the Terminator type, right? When we were shooting in Kuka, they look like birds. They're like little birds picking up things, and you see it in time lapse. Like they go down and peck and then come up and move stuff, and it was just really cool to see them in action. What was it like designing the shoot for those, Ek? We want to capture the scale of from the small one to the bigger one. I'm just trying to figure out a way to do that, you know, so people understand, like, hey, there's one that's massive, there's another one that can, can literally fit, fit in your kitchen, mm -hmm. you know. I was waiting for R2-D2 to come out, <laughs> but instead I got the Kuka arm. The Kuka arm. <laughs> the Kuka arm. <laughs> we get the Kuka arm in more ways than one. So, I mean, Kuka was an incredible host to us, no doubt about it. And that's the dance, the line that we have to dance around with True Future, right? So we're, we're featuring content that is, like, super cutting edge on tech. Mm -hmm. And then also, True Future is exploring the people, places, things, and social issues going on. And sometimes we're describing those in the native environment that the company is in. Mm -hmm. And that can sometimes be off-putting or misinterpreted. So we did run into that with this shoot. This was the very first season we ran into that. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that it's something we had to learn how to navigate. But again, fabulous hosts, fabulous uh, opening the doors to us that they've never done before. I'm just going with the flow here. I'm going to Cinema Verte. 
Well, that's kind of what San Roberto <laughs> is. Okay, let's go to number three. Well, we're doing a time lapse with the robot from Neosis. So I'm uh, going to watch the sunrise come up over the robot. And should look pretty cool. Is that Eric? Yep. He's a stud. Yeah, that's the that's thing that um, you guys have ruined um, television, movies for me, everything. I no longer look at it like a consumer. I now, I now see what goes into this, the magic of making two minutes of a, a robot like Yomi look amazing. So to make that shot happen for the layperson, what, what, tell me what that meant. It's three o'clock in the morning. We never scout that location. We have some, some devices that we can track the sun and see where the sun's coming out and kind of predict what's gonna happen, you know? I think he set up lights. He set up these pink lights there. Then the sun started coming in a different direction. Then he's moving lights, and we already started a time lapse. So he has to restart a time lapse. And then Eric showed. We meet Eric. It's pitch black at three thirty in the morning. The CEO is Eric's. Yeah, Eric's that's, that's the one's the best thing. Yeah. Right. He, we're driving down we're the street <laughs> in the pitch black in the middle of Winwood, and all of a sudden this guy. You just see a little light coming down. And Eric's on his electric scooter. One of the heads of uh, yeah. a six foot two Belgian. Yeah, right. just driving, pulls up in his scooter, and we're like getting gear out of the car. We're like, Who is did there? you ride your scooter here yeah. like, to do this? So, you know, to capture what would be like, eh, that's a really nice robot moving along, it's really amazing. That's one of the things that Dragonfly does really well is no, you can't unsee what you've seen yeah. with what your team does. Is I mean, nobody shoots tech like the Dragonfly team. And that's not a commercial, and it is because forever that tech has been caught in a very vanilla, conventional corporate way. And one of the things about True Future is that we show the elegance, the brutal elegance, the sexy sort of luxury of med tech that nobody has ever shown that way before. Are you eating? No. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine. This is not 100% true for you. Of course, you are allowed to film uh, in those locations which we scouted on Monday, but this uh, means no private cameras, no cell phones, etc. So please don't uh, take any photos or videos with uh, private cell phones or cameras. <laughs> is that Axel? No, that's, that's the other guy. Oh, I There's see Axel. Oh, you guys let Axel shoulder up. Nice. So basically, we broke every single rule <laughs> Kuka gave us ten times over. Ten times over the place. We could not Shocker. follow one rule. Listen, production crews can't. Yeah. They can't. Yeah. We're trying to just get our shit done. Yeah, yeah. They were so happy when we were out of there. I, you know what, though? I mean... They were so nice. That's, I don't want that to be lost, so, yeah. They were, they were so very nice, Sebastian. All of them were, you know. Yeah, all, they were lovely people. And, and, and they did something that they had never done before, allowing full access. We didn't have many restrictions on us on what we could ask and dig into, which, respectfully, I got to give them huge props for. No, they, they were great. Yeah. We, it, we have trouble coloring yes. in the line. But my favorite thing was our second camera operator, who's not here, <laughs> Zach, but we pissed them off for a day and a half. They were ready for us to go. They have this really nice lobby. It's like the Google lobby where... It's an atrium. A, it's not even a lobby. It's a beautiful space. All glass. There's a coffee shop in there, and there's people. There's patrons in there. And we're setting up a shot, and it takes a while sometimes. And so our second camera operator had nothing, nothing to do at that for five minutes. Out of the corner of my eye, I see him starting to do yoga. Two minutes go by, he's still doing yoga. And our handler comes up to us and is like... Can you please make sure that guy is not doing your in our lobby? Because that's that's that no good. And I was like, I fucking lost my mind because I, I saw it and I knew it. So I was like, fucking Zach, get the f off the ground. And he looks at me. He's like, what's the problem? <laughs> Let's go to number six. It's one of our standard working horses uh, of the of the Quantic series. Um, well, we're putting here the, the, its maximum payload uh, to the robot. You see the 210 uh, kilograms. 
And it, it almost looks like a gymnasium, yes. right? You've got the weights on the rack, 110 kilograms, 270 kilograms. You've got the weights over there. Want to check? <laughs> I trained this morning, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, this is just amazing. And I love your uh, KUKA gymnasium. Thanks for sharing that. You're welcome. Yeah, that test facility was very cool. Again, me being an engineer geek, uh, that was super cool. And that was the closest to a transformer feel that I had in any of the shoots, right? That was the very first potentially menacing robot. There were no other menacing robots, whether it was the dental robot or whether it was uh, some of the other surgical robots that we did, Corindus uh, or even the KUKA. But that one there was like, okay, um, that potentially could be coming down the street like a T-Rex. That's what I thought of, like a T-Rex when I saw that. Yeah, that's when sci-fi came alive. Yeah. And you were like, oh, f that thing all going down. down. Yeah. That's it. It was. It was, it was whipping around that 110 kilogram, which is 200 pound weight. I had like somebody in its mouth, like from uh, hey, Jurassic yeah. Park, <laughs> and whipping the guy around. Oh. Na, 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 na. That was just like a T Rex for me, that one. No, but how'd you feel when you first saw that? It was a very, again, a very first one that got my attention. Um, like all the other robots, oh, cool. Mm, mm, mm. But this was, again, it was, if you You're review it, thing. it was whipping things around. So it was like you had. Faye Ray in your mouth, and you were whipping her around, trying to tear her apart limb from limb. John, how did you feel? Because you were shooting that robot on the Steadicam. Oh, it was cool. Oh, you were Steadicam. Yeah, he was, he, he was on that. Yeah, that was, because uh, there was only one way to shoot that scene, and it was over and above. That shot where you went over and then came back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's bus. just kind of the whole, you got the whole world and, the, and a feel for where you guys were in relation to this thing slinging around, all kind of stuff. Besides that, behind us, there are forklifts, robot forklifts, moving pallets, so the thing will sneak up on you and you don't even realize it's back there, and, you know, it stops, and, well, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> Sorry, did I just mess you up with that? That's okay. Sorry. Editor Schmick and hits on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> don't understand what the sound is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go. What were you guys doing? <laughs> Holy sh your girl who got hypnotized, so now you're running around really freaked out. I'm I mean, get out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Blair Witch. It's like a bad trip. What is she doing? And now look at the camera. It's interpreting acting. <laughs> Am I still scared? <laughs> is there any other direction you'd like to go? <laughs> go very close to her face and like, God. I've got no words. I, <laughs> what work. happened was, heard Everybody we were, did acid? Well, no, 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 no. So Icky rented a smoke machine and a strobe light, but we didn't use them, but they put us in an Airbnb in Boston that was like, we all thought we were gonna get killed in. It was not good. Like an Amityville horror? Yeah, one? it was super scary. Icky was like, let's shoot a horror film. <laughs> Cause he's like, well, we never used the strobe light and, and smoke that, machine. Where's Rena? Was that a line item on the fucking budget? <laughs> and Paige was super into it. <laughs> Paige directed. Christina so the, Brummett also was pretty fired up. Too. She loved it. And John, you were the ax murderer, it looked like? I was, I played the ax murderer, and I'm still waiting to get a call back for the voiceover for yeah. the trailer. Yeah. How do you feel when you see stuff like that? I'm pissed. <laughs> for real? No. Okay. No. Now hard. I know why the crew doesn't want me staying at the places they stay. Because this is the debauchery that goes on after hours. That house was haunted. It was? Oh, oh well, there you was, guys were talking about doors opening by There themselves. was stuff upstairs happening while we were all downstairs. We had Pandora playing, and when this one song came on, the running started. Uh, and we would stop the song, the running would stop. We sent a PA up there to check it out because we thought somebody, maybe one of us was up there. Uh, Didn't happen while he was, as soon as he got back, we started the song again and the running, and, and, it, and then the song finished and never heard it again. I would have played that all night long. Oh, right? Song. Yeah. So that's wrap up of Roundtable Season 2, um, which is robots. And we've covered the world. We've covered Germany, Dublin, Miami, Boston, well, most of the world. Uh, but just showing you the dialogue and conversations going around uh, surgical robotics, healthcare robotics, but probably more importantly, the people, the culture, and the places. So I am sure you've had a thrill going through this as we have. 
uh, stay tuned for season three coming up where we're going to start up nation to Israel and showing you the badasses where 8 million people are changing the world in all kinds of ways. See ya.